Well, you've made it to a second Sunday in the new year. You are at Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ in Lansing, Michigan, and today is January 10th of 2021. Welcome to our service on the first Sunday in the church season of Epiphany. Epiphany means appearance or manifestation and refers to the appearance or the manifestation of the Christ to the world. Epiphany begins every year on January 6th, which celebrates the wise men representing humanity uh, meeting the Christ child. Today's worship service will focus on the first chapter of Genesis, the uh, beginning of creation, and the first chapter in the Gospel of Mark describing the baptism of Jesus. In fact, this Sunday is also called the baptism of our Lord. And as we think about the baptism of Jesus, this is also a time for us to reflect on our own baptism and the vows that we have made. Uh, just a word about current events. This has been a difficult week in our nation's history, and for many of us it has been a difficult week in our personal history. Part of what we will talk about today is God's transformative power to create the heavens and the earth and to make a new creation of people. Let us try to put God's transformative power of love and reconciliation to work for the healing of our nation and our communities. May God's Holy Spirit be upon us to guide us to justice and peace. Now let's invocate God's Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. God called upon light, and there was light. John the Baptist meets Jesus in the wilderness at the Jordan River. Jesus is the one John prophesied about baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Dear God, before you began creating the world and the universe, your spirit moved over the dark waters of chaos, and you began to order creation. There are times in our lives when we face the dark waters of chaos, and we fear that we will be overwhelmed by it. For many people, this last year was a time of chaos. For many people, this last week was a time of chaos. We reach out for your spirit to save us from the violence and turbulence of this world. We ask for your creative and constructive force to work among us to bring order in the form of tolerance, acceptance, understanding, compassion, and kindness. May your loving spirit guide us to an order of peace and spiritual prosperity. We thank you for bringing us light and life. Your creation is a wondrous and beautiful thing which you have made for us to enjoy and to protect. Baptize us with your Holy Spirit that we might know the revelation of love for us. Shine on us the healing power of your love and grace that we might live abundantly. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart means that we want to have our spiritual awareness awakened. We want God to dwell in our hearts and give us insight into God's ways. Open the eyes of my heart. light of 
your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. holy. Let us pray. A new year has begun, eternal God. This is a time to look back and to look forward. This is a time to celebrate the good that we have done and review what we have done wrong in the past and to set our goals to do what is right in the coming year. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus and this is also a time for us to reflect on the meaning and obligations of our own baptism. Creator God, you have called us to serve you. We were made a new creation in Christ by our baptism. You have redeemed us from chaos and death. Your Holy Spirit is upon us now to lead us in the light of your grace. We are called to join with you in creating a new world. And we step forward in faith to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we will begin the story of God by the telling of how God began creating the universe. The entirety of the scriptures tell the story of how God and the people have related to each other over the millennium, topped by the story of how God sent us salvation through Jesus Christ we love to hear the story of Jesus and his love for us, and we love to tell the story. Let's sing I Love to Tell the Story, number 522 in the New Century Hymnal. Seem hungering and 
The story we love to tell starts with the beginning of creation. We have heard the words before. They resonate in our memory. The earth was a formless void which God's spirit surveyed and then God spoke the first recorded words. Let there be light. And thus began the creation of our world. From Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, we hear the start of all things. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This ends the first reading. When someone is baptized, they promise to keep God's commandments and love other people. Baptism is a big responsibility, but God is happy when we follow the example of God's Son. So we should have faith and follow Jesus. If you were baptized as a young child, your parents made the promise that they would teach about God and how to be a follower of Jesus. Today we are going to learn how cotton candy and wet wipes can help remind us of the promises that are made at baptism. We can learn how to live our lives from our Bibles, Sunday school, church, our pastor, and our families when we learn that Jesus taught us about how God wants us to live. Sometimes when life is good and things are going great, it's easy to make good decisions and follow Jesus' teachings. Life is sweet then, just like cotton candy. Yum. Perhaps you've been praised for your work on a project. You had a great time with your friends. The sun was shining and you were smiling. You ran into a classmate who was discouraged because they were having problems understanding some homework. It was easy for you to help and encourage the person. You could shine your light and show you cared easily. Life is sweet. Thank you. Mm. Nothing like sugar. But sometimes life is not sweet. Life can become sticky and messy, just like cotton candy can. It can be difficult for us to make good choices, to love others, and to treat everyone with kindness and justice. Maybe you did poorly on a test you forgot to study for. You spilled lunch on your favorite shirt, and your friends never called you when they said they would. You're angry and disappointed when you get home. Your little sister is happy to see you and wants to play, but you're grumpy. And you yell at her that she's just a baby and you don't like babies. And she runs away in tears. When things like this happen and our lives become a sticky mess, we can ask God to forgive our mistakes. Then, like a wet wipe, God will wipe away our messes and forgive us. When that happens, we have a clean slate, and we can begin again to make good decisions and follow Jesus' teachings. Our lives will be sweet again. Join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to live a life in faithfulness to you. We thank you for the cotton candy times in our lives, when life is sweet and we can closely follow you and keep the promises made at baptism. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, when we make mistakes and stray from your ways, making a mess of our lives. Thank you for loving us so much that you are there to wipe away our messes and allow us to start over again to be your servant. Amen. Baptism was done before John the Baptist ever lived. Baptism was a time of cleansing oneself in preparation of standing before God in worship. It was done many times over throughout one's life. But John interprets the baptism he does as a once-in-a-lifetime cleansing and redirecting of the heart. John's baptism was a means of people repenting, 
turning away from a life of selfish pursuits and a life lived dedicated to serving God. John warned that they would soon be standing before God. John's baptism was a preparation of a person's heart to receive God. Jesus came to John to show us that baptism is vitally important. Mark 1, 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God for today. May all who hear the word be blessed. Amen. Now we are in some of the shortest days of the year still. We continue to struggle with the darkness of our days. The days get longer over winter, but we do not always realize that. It often seems that the days of winter are also frequented by cloudy and overcast days, which makes the days seem darker and shorter. We long for the brighter and warmer days of spring with the promise of new life. Now, the book of Genesis begins with the darkest of all times before God created or began to create the heavens and the earth. Although elsewhere in scripture we have the impression that God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing, here at the beginning of Genesis it seems that the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. The earth was a formless void in the midst of chaotic waters. In this account of creation, the Spirit of God is in the midst of chaos. Everything was in disarray and confusion. Into this mess, God comes to bring order to the heavens and the earth. God sets out to transform the chaos into an ordered universe. Well, let me ask you, what is the first thing that we do when we enter a dark room? We turn on the light, right? Well, so the first thing that God does in building in this building project of heaven and earth, surrounded by deep darkness, is to turn on the light. God says the first words ever recorded in the universe. God simply speaks, and it happens, just like that. And God says, let there be light. And Genesis records that there was light. God transformed the darkness by speaking a few words and everything changed. Then Genesis says that God saw the light and determined that it was good. God was perhaps like a sculptor who makes that first impression into the clay or the first chisel mark into the stone, steps back to examine the beginning of a work of art and decides that it was a good impression and a good chip of stone. And after approving of the creation of light, God separates the light from the darkness. And Genesis declares that it was day and night. Day and night is the fundamental way that we order our lives. We need light. But we would die if we had to live in constant daylight. We need the night and the darkness to balance our lives. But once again, we would die if we had to live in constant darkness. In transforming chaos into order, God creates a balance of elements and functions. 
we have often heard scientists commenting on the balance of nature. When the balance is disturbed, many unintended and unfortunate things happen. Oftentimes, when people speak to transform, seek to transform the world, to take what they think is chaos and to change it into an order which they think is more beneficial for themselves, well, it turns out bad for everyone. In the centuries before our own, people hunted wolves for, to extinction, almost extinction. People thought that they were doing a good thing by eliminating a destructive predator. But people soon found out that without wolves, the populations of deer and other prey animals increased wildly, and the animals died of disease and starvation. The wolves provided a balance which kept both wolves and deer relatively healthy. It is oftentimes a tremendous challenge to find the right balance in nature and in our lives. We often do not realize how well God has put together everything until we come along in our human wisdom and change things to what we think they should be. And God's wisdom always seems to prove better than any human wisdom. God first organized the heavens and the earth. And then God created all various forms of life on the earth. God created human beings and put us uh, in, in some instinctual drives within us to live by and to function well in communities. But people kept overriding these natural impulses of cooperation and consideration. So God then gave us laws to modify our behavior so that we would all get along and live in peace and have prosperity. Many people decided not to obey God's wisdom and communities fell apart, fell out of balance, and some went into outright chaos. Then Jesus, God, sent Jesus to show us that God loves us. God gave us laws to help us to live together constructively, but we did not like laws telling us what we could and could not do, so God sent Jesus to make it clear to we human beings that God is doing these things for our benefit and that God has our best interests at heart. Jesus died to show us how much God loved us. What more can someone do than to, than to die, to show us how much that they love you? Jesus died on a cross out of love for us. This was a radical demonstration of love. When someone realizes that Jesus died to offer them forgiveness from God and to open up the connection to God, to bridge the gap between God and us, some call it salvation, then on some level they become aware that it was love that moved God to do this for us. Why? Why would God go to all this trouble to make a sacrifice of God's own self once and for all to die so that wrongdoing can be forgiven, so that there is no obstacle between us and God to offer us eternal life with God? Why would God do all this if God did not love us? God loves us. So when a person becomes aware of this expression of love of God through Jesus Christ, that person seeks to return that love to God by doing what God wants to have done. And that seeking to do what pleases God usually begins with the person getting baptized. Baptism is a demonstration of a person's acceptance to be a part of the transforming of their lives into what God wants them to be. You see, baptism is the beginning of the creation of a new person in Jesus Christ. In baptism, a person allows God to take the chaos of their lives and to order it according to God's principles. As God has done with the chaos before creation, 
So God can transform the chaos within a person. The baptized person works with the Holy Spirit to transform themselves into a person who serves God. The person being baptized is stating that he or she is no longer living just for themselves, but rather that he and she is living for God. In baptism, we give our lives over to God. We become a living sacrifice, as Paul puts it, dedicating ourselves to serving God to the best of our discernment of God's will and the strength and abilities that we have to do God's will. When we decide to be baptized, we are choosing to make ourselves a part of God's continual creation. And the part of creation we focus on to transform to God's specifications, what is that? Well, it's ourselves, it's our primary focus. We focus on transforming the chaos of our self-will and selfish pursuits to the order of God's will and God's pursuits. And after Jesus was baptized, his focus became doing God's work. We do the same. And as we do the same, we hear God say to us the same words that God said to Jesus at the River Jordan. You are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. And just as Jesus faced many challenges and threats after his baptism, so we too face many challenges and threats after ours. Yes, most of us have been immersed under water or had water poured over us or sprinkled on us, and we call it baptism. But baptism actually takes place within a person's own heart and soul. John baptized people with water, but Jesus baptized people with the Holy Spirit. So no matter when you were dunked or when you had water poured on you, your real baptism takes place when your heart is open to the transforming power of God's Holy Spirit. There are many people who have been immersed without truly being baptized. Each day, we decide whether we are going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit or we are just uh, going to live by the chaos within us and around us. Each day is a day for us to live up to our baptism vows to follow and serve God. And each day can be a new day of creation for us. Let's join God in transforming our lives and transforming the world in order that God wants it to be. Remember that you are loved by God and with God all things are possible. And after all, God created all things, including you. Amen. Now let us pray. God of all creation, we thank you for the beauty of the earth. Thank you for the gift of life and all of its wonder and challenges. You have blessed us with a beautiful world. We confess that we have not always followed your direction faithfully. We have fallen away and have needed your forgiveness and guidance. So thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ and the new life that he offers. Through Jesus, you offer us new beginnings and opportunities for transformation. Help us to become the people you want us to be. You have offered us peace between us. Through our baptism, we seek to no longer struggle against your will but rather to follow you as closely as we can. In baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit for our comfort and guidance. On this, the baptism of our Lord Sunday, we remember the promises that we made for our baptism. And even though some of us were infants, our parents made promises to instruct us in the ways of Jesus Christ. So help us to remember the lessons and to live them out with our faith and devotion. We ask for peace within us and peace between us all. 
So please bring your healing power on our nation, our states, our communities, and our homes. We have deep divisions in our politics and in our society and in our communities. Violence has erupted. People have been hurt and even killed. Many people are ill and injured. As you know, many are suffering from the COVID-19 virus, and we have been having some of the worst days of the virus with infections and deaths. Uh, some of that suffering that is for the ill and injured is also with the loss of someone that we have loved. We ask for you to comfort each and every one, but we also ask for your healing power on all people in need of healing. As you transform the chaos before creation into the order of creation, we pray for you to transform our lives and transform our world. May we be your dedicated servants to bring about a better world to earth. May we work with you to transform our world to an end to the pandemic, to an end to the political divisions, to an end of racial conflict, to an end of destroying the world that you created, O oh God. By your grace, we are saved, O oh Lord. Come and save us. And hear us as we join together in common praise and supplication in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing song speaks again of our desire to serve God faithfully. In baptism, we give over our lives to serve God but each day we decide whether or not to give our lives over to God. As we surrender our lives to God, our love grows. We now sing of our desire to give ourselves to God. Take my life, God, let it be. Number 448 in the New Century Hymnal. As you go out to face the chaos of another day, remember that God's creative and restorative power goes with you. As God can change chaos into order, may you turn the chaos of your life into an order pleasing to God. May God's grace and love 
transform you into a new creation that lives by the principles set before us by Jesus Christ. May all of us know God's transformative power so we may become a loving community. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and set about helping God to create a heavenly world. God bless you all. Amen. And now let's turn to our announcements. I want to remind you that Pilgrim's Building remains closed through January 15th. Alcoholics Anonymous does continue to meet here every week, day morning, practicing social distancing. Pilgrim's executive ministry team will be meeting tomorrow on Monday, January 11th, to determine whether we will remain closed. Our Sunday services will continue to be online on Pilgrim's website, Facebook, and YouTube. The Stewardship Committee and the Executive Ministry Team want to thank all of you who contributed your financial support in 2020 in the midst of uncertainty and the coronavirus. If you are looking for offering envelopes for 2021, they are available in the church office for you to pick up or we can arrange for them to be delivered. Pilgrim's Church Secretary will be in the office on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Please mark your calendars. This is the first official call for Pilgrim's annual congregational meeting to be held on Saturday, January 30th at 10 a.m. For those of you who have devices, we will meet by Zoom. And for those who do not have computer and the internet, you will be able to participate by phone. Details will be forthcoming over the next few weeks. The annual report will be mailed out prior to the annual meeting. That is it for now, and once again, may this be a good year for all of us. God bless you. Amen.